الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين We continue our discussion about spiritual aids and empowering tools and we particularly continue the discussion about the third group of the verses of the Quran which use a derivative of Nasr. We said in addition to Esta'ana and Imdad, we have verses that use a derivative of Nasr. And this is the most frequently mentioned group of the verses of the Quran in this regard. Yesterday I ended with verse 126 of chapter 3, Ali Imran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما جعله الله إلا بشرى لكم ولتطمئن قلوبكم به ومن نصر إلا من عند الله العزيز الحكيم. I already talked about this. Very similar to this verse is verse 10 of chapter 8, سورة الأنفال. It's very similar. وَمَا جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بُشْرَى There is no lakum here. وَلَتَطْمَئِنَّ بِهِ قُلُوبُكُمْ In the other verse is لَتَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُكُمْ بِهِ وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ In the other one was وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ الْعَزِيزَ الْحَكِيمِ Here is وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيم the concept is similar, just the wording is different slightly. And the concept is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can provide us with Nasr. And now I want to enter into my analysis of Nasr. It seems that in the Quran, Nasr is that type of assistance which is sufficient for victory, sufficient for success. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Nasr comes, it means that you are going to overcome problems, you are going to defeat the enemies, you are going to succeed. And there is no one other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can provide us such assistance. People may, for example, suppose people who are working for some selfish or some, I don't know, vicious cause. Maybe they help each other. Maybe they give ideas to each other. Maybe they give money to each other, manpower to each other. But this is not called Nasr. Nasr means to give enough to make sure, to guarantee that the other party is successful. This only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ Or وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Now, we mentioned verses that deny other people being able to support you with Nasr and we mentioned the verses that says that Allah would support you with Nasr. For example, in Surah A'raf, which is chapter 7 of the Quran, verses 191 and 192, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the pagans, about polytheists, those who worship Different gods, different lords, associate partners to God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ayushrikuna ma la yakhluku shay'an wa hum yukhlaqoon. Are they worshipping 
those that are not able to create, rather they themselves are created. So are you worshiping creatures? One problem with worshiping creatures, in addition to being not logical, is this. وَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ لَهُمْ نَصْرًا وَلَا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَنْصُرُونَ These lords which are false, these idols, they are not able to help them sufficiently. They are not even able to help themselves. لا يستطيعون لهم نصرا They are not able to help them. ولا أنفسهم ينصرون They cannot also help themselves. Those idols that were worshipped in the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Were they able to help their worshippers? No. Were they able to protect themselves? No. They cannot even help themselves. In same surah, Surah A'raf, verse 197, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ نَصْرَكُمْ وَلَا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَنْصُرُونَ Those that you call other than God, they are not able to help you sufficiently. They are not able to assist you and they are not able to assist themselves. So, no one is able to provide you with assistance, real assistance, sufficient assistance. On the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able and is there to provide us with sufficient assistance. And this is mentioned in many verses of the Quran. For example, Surah Ali Imran, verses 150 and 151. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your master, your guardian, and he is the best helper. Not in the sense that there are helpers and he is the best. No. It means no one else is able to do his job. Like for example, when we say, فَتَبَارَكَ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ It doesn't mean that there are other creators. It means that no matter what people think, the best and the only sufficient person to help is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. سَنُلْقِي فِي قُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الرُّعْبَ بِمَا أَشْرَكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا One way of supporting you and helping you is that Allah puts and projects fear in the heart of those who are against the truth. Those who reject the truth, they would be fearful. This fear weakens them and strengthens the believers. Surah Al Imran, verse 160. This is one of the key verses in this discussion. In Yansurkumullah Fala Ghalibalakum. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you. There would be no one to overcome you, no one to defeat you. It's impossible. This is why I said Nasr is followed by victory. No way Allah undertakes your help and you would fail. You would be defeated. It's impossible. In Yansur Kumullah Fala Ghalibalakum. Ghalib with rain comes from ghalaba. Means no one would be able to defeat you, to overpower you. Wa in yakhulkum, faman dalladi yansurukum min baghde. And if Allah leaves you to yourself, if Allah abandons you, if Allah withdraws His help, who is there to help you after God? وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ 
only in God the believers should put their trust. Inshallah, tomorrow I will talk about tawakkul. Because one of the spiritual tools is tawakkul. And inshallah, I will explain tawakkul is not just an idea. Tawakkul is not just a theory. Tawakkul is a practical tool for gaining assistance from Allah. To bring down his help is one way through tawakkul and there are other ways that inshallah we will talk. So this ayah says, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ So only in God you should have your trust and if you trust God and if God accepts you as true believers, his help would come, then فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ in Surat An'am, verse 34, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Unfortunately, there was a sad pattern, repetitive pattern, that the prophets, the messengers, were rejected were denied. People didn't just say we don't believe. In order to justify themselves, they said, Na'uzu Billah, you are liars. Takzib means they didn't just say we don't believe. They rejected them. They said you are not honest, you are not truthful. So, وَلَقَدْ كُذَّبَتْ رُسُلٌ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Messengers before you means many messengers at least if not all many many of them they were rejected but they exercised patience they didn't lose their faith they didn't give up they carried on with patience we said before one important thing is patience. Patience is very important. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They were annoyed. They were hurt. Because these people don't just reject you. First they reject you, but then they try to physically, psychologically, Financially, politically, they try to put you under pressure. They spread rumors. They do lots of psychological war. Uzu. So the messengers were annoyed. But they remained patient. Hatta atahum nasruna. Till our, our assistance came. And there is no change, nothing to change Allah's words, which here means Allah's rules and laws. These kalimat here means the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is a general law of the creation that if an honest and truthful believer is rejected but he remains patient and then they annoy him but again he remains patient and persistent Allah's help would come and truly the news of the messengers have has come to you Surah A'raf Verse 191 and 192. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I said, mentions that the partners that they associate to God, the idols are not able to help themselves and they are not able to help their followers. Surah A'raf 197, the same. To save time, I mention only few more verses. But Alhamdulillah, we have 
lots of verses and I made a survey and those who are interested, inshallah, I can share with them more verses. But here I just choose some of the verses because we don't have enough time. In Surah Hajj, verse 40, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says again as a general pattern. Certainly, with Lama Ta'akid, with Noon of Qasam, as we say in Arabic, so with ex extra emphasis, Allah says, certainly, God is helping those who help him. Those who help God, God would help them. Truly Allah is strong and powerful and he is Aziz. No one can defeat him. So now we have a new concept. To help God. What does it mean? We said God helps. Nasrullah means to give you sufficient help. But how can we help God? This is the question. Let me read for you some more verses that has similar concept and then inshallah I will explain. In Surah Qafir or Mu'min, verse 51, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna We truly help our messengers. Plus, not only we help our messengers, we also help believers. We help them in dunya, we help them on the day of judgment when the witnesses stand up to bear their witness, to offer their testimony. Surah Muhammad, verse 7. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in tansurullah yansurkum wa yuthabbit aqdamakum. If you help Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will help you and Allah will strengthen your standpoints, will make your standpoints firm. So you help him, he will help you. And then Surah As-Saf, verse 13. وَأُخْرَى تَجِدُونَهَا Sorry. وَأُخْرَى تُحِبُّونَهَا نَصْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَفَتْحٌ قَرِيبٌ وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ The other thing that you love is assistance from God and near victory. Nasr and Fath. If Allah's help comes, fatah and victory comes. Also Surah Nasr number one. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَاتْحِ When the assistance of God and victory come. And in Surah Safat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in two places talk about victory and success. One is 114 to 116. وَلَقَدْ مَنَنَّا عَلَى مُوسَى وَهَارُونَ We obliged Musa and Harun. وَنَجَّيْنَاهُمَا وَقَوْمَهُمَا مِنَ الْكَرْبِ الْعَظِيمِ We saved them and their people from great difficulties and pain and grief. وَنَصَرْنَاهُمْ We helped them فَكَانُوا هُمُ الْغَالِبِينَ So they were victorious. No way to receive help from God and you'll be failing. And Surah Safad, verse 171, verse 172, and 173. وَلَقَدْ سَبَقَتْ كَلِمَتُنَا لِعِبَادِنَا الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِنَّهُمْ لَهُمُ الْمَنْسُورُونَ وَإِنَّ جُنْدَنَا لَهُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ This is 
something which is decided already in Allah's knowledge, in Allah's decree, this is decided that our messengers will be helped and our army and soldiers will be victorious. So, now, because I want to, inshallah, tomorrow move on to the discussion about tabakkul, let me summarize what we said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only available guardian and helper for people. There are sodo wali and sodo nasir, sodo guardians and sodo helpers, but they are not even to help themselves. They are not able to provide themselves with care, let alone to provide people with care. What we need to do is to subscribe to his guardianship, to make sure that he undertakes our guidance, our guardianship, and helps us. If he accepts us and becomes our wali, definitely we are going to succeed. As an individual, your success would depend on you. The success of an individual is to live a life of piety and to have peaceful life, tranquil life in dunya and happy eternal life. Every person, if he is a true believer, can achieve this. But as a society, as a community, if we want to have community success, then we should all work together. It's not enough that you alone are pious and a believer in God. If we want our country, our society, our community to succeed worldly, we have to be united. And we have to all work together and call upon Allah to guide us, be our guardian and helper. This is where in the course of history, Sometimes we see victory and sometimes we see failure. Because some nations, they listen to the mans of God, to the prophets and messengers and imams and godly leaders wholeheartedly, and Allah helped them even against Pharaoh. That people thought Pharaoh cannot be challenged. Allah helped them against Pharaoh. Allah helped them against Namrud. But if believers are divided. If some of them put their trust in God, some of them not. If some use godly means and some use satanic means, then as a society, we will not be succeeding. Maybe our enemies for some time will rule us. So as individual, it's your choice and you can always 100% be successful. But this doesn't guarantee as a society we are going to be successful and winning because that needs not only one person's decision. Even if that person is a prophet, but he cannot alone bring assistance of God to the society. We need to work together as a community. And then, if you help Allah that much which is possible for you. This is my last point. Allah says, "In Tansurullah yansurkum," or Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wala yansuran Allah man yansuro." You help him, he helps you. He helps those who help him. What can we do? We said Nasr is sufficient assistance. Can we provide God? which means religion, faithful people. Can we provide them with sufficient assistance? Here there is a beautiful point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always can provide us with sufficient assistance. But when it comes to us and he says, if you help me, I help you, he doesn't require you 
to provide with sufficient assistance. You provide him and his people with your best assistance, not sufficient assistance. If you do your best, he accepts and then he helps you sufficiently. So we don't need to do miracles. We don't need to outnumber enemies in number of people, manpower, resources, weapon, and so on and so forth. What is important is we do our best. We don't reserve some of our talents and skills and time. No, put everything forward for God, whatever you have, and then he will do the rest. As I always say, do your best and leave to God the rest. But do your best. If you can do this much, do it. Then he will do the rest. So, the key for success for any individual is very easy. You listen to God. You take his advice. You ask him with your honesty and piety to be your guardian and master. He takes over and he becomes your wali and nasir and you will succeed. If you want anything for your person, whether it be meaningful a spiritual life in dunya or happy eternal life, you will get it. But if we as a community, as a nation, if we want to succeed, if we don't want to be ruled by our enemies, then this is not one person's choice. We have to work together. At least a large number of us, us have to put their trust in God, do their best with maximum unity, and then inshallah Allah will help them. And this is his pattern. This is his law. This is his sunnah. La mubaddila li kalimat Allah. There is no way that a nation wholeheartedly with a spirit of unity they make Allah their guardian and do their best and they would be failing. It's impossible. Inshallah, tomorrow we will talk about tawakkul as one of the most important keys and tools for success, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include us among the people that he has undertaken their guidance and guardianship and assistance. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam.